Hello everyone. Hello everyone. Um, right, reason why we're here, does anybody remember that book? Young people ask Young people questions ask. that they ask, um, answers that work. I remember when that was released back in 1989, I had to sit in a specific section um, as a young youth at the time, um, and we were all handed a copy, our own copy, uh, at the end of a specific talk. And um, we all just thought it was wonderful. You know, this book that was being provided to all of our young, our young brothers and sisters was just absolutely amazing. So naturally, uh, as a Jehovah's Witness, when you're growing up and you become a parent yourself, what do you do when you have children? You give them a copy. Yeah because that's what you do. That's your brain matter, that's your brainwashing, your th thought process of follow what you normally do. Well, it was re-released in 2011, and this is the one that was brought out, and I think there's another volume to it as well, but this is volume one. Um, now, because times change, they've obviously decided to bring in subjects that they didn't cover in the original book, they now cover in this book. And one of the particular areas was um, sexual predators and sexual abuse. Um, which wasn't even touched on in the, in the previous one um, in that way and um, it was brought to our attention by a brother um, on on a, on a message he sent to us, have you seen it? because he was talking about giving it to his sister and how he was particularly drawing our attention to um, a particular article on this in this book that, that's on page 232 mentioning tell your story well after reading that bit we went straight back to the beginning of the chapter to read the whole thing and just to start breaking it down to analyze exactly what's in there because once you've um, once you come out of the organization you can start looking at these books and this literature with a clear head mm. uh, you haven't got rose tinted glasses on you can actually give this some critique basically yeah. to actually look at it for what it is and more importantly what it isn't yeah and the amount of information that is not in this particular advice yeah. on such an important subject is shocking it's horrendous it's absolutely I, shocking. I just want to say what you th you think you're doing watchtower by track society you are not the be-all and end-all you do not know it all you are not counselors you are not trained in every single matter that comes up in people's lives so and especially when it comes to such a delicate subject to have it in a the book that they're giving out to children by the by these parents who think that the, the the society have never got it wrong and that everything is absolutely fantastically right and perfect counsel to give your children you are wrong you have never been so much so wrong on subjects like this where it's so delicate How it's not just you? wrong it's it's extremely reckless it's, it's dangerous very very reckless and anybody that's looking to this after an event of rape or molestation for advice on where they went wrong, you're not going to find it in this book. No, okay, well the, the chapter's called How Can I Protect Myself From Sexual Predators? Okay, we'll read chapter one um, and chapter two, oh, chapter one and two, paragraph one and two. Sure. Yeah, paragraph, sorry. Right, sexual predators run rampant today and young people are often the target of their attack. Some youths like Annette are assaulted by a stranger, others are attacked by a neighbour. Such was the case with Natalie, who at just 10 years of age was sexually abused by a teenager who lived near her home. I was so scared and ashamed that at first I didn't tell anyone, she says. And then it goes on about youths being abused. Um, one was abused, her name was Carmen, by her father. And when she eventually confronted him, um, he said he was sorry, but a few months later she was, she was kicked out of his house. Now, I don't know what kind of impression that this is supposed to be giving to people, but um, it's almost like that because she, she actually approached her father about it, uh, eventually when she confronted him, um, she was kicked out. So is that saying that bad things will happen if you report things? Mm. Is that giving people the right That's the message I get from it. Giving, you know, if you report this, this yeah. is the bad things happen it's, to you. It's gonna damage That's you. That's the first thing yeah. that got, got me going. Then it goes straight on to sexual abuse at the hands of a neighbour, friend or family member is disturbingly common today, but the um, exploration of young people is nothing new. Such deplorable conduct took place even in the days when the Bible was written. Today we live in critical, critical, critical times. Many people lack natural affection and it's common for girls, in brackets, and even boys, to be taken advantage of sexually. While no um, 
precaution guarantees your safety, there is much you can do to protect yourself. Consider the following tips. Right, first one, be alert. As you walk outdoors, know what is happening ahead of you, behind you, and on both sides. Some areas are known to be dangerous, especially at night. To take the extent, um, to the extent possible, either avoid those areas or at least make sure you're not alone. Get this, don't send mixed messages. Avoid flirting or dressing provocatively. Such actions may send the message that you are interested in getting physical, or at least you wouldn't object to it. This is this is. Outrageous. Can I just go back to the initial expre yeah. expression here? That Natalie was ten years of age when she was sexually sexually abused by a teenager who lived near her home. Ten. Sorry. But you're going on to giving experiences here and ideas here on sending mixed messages, flirting and dressing and provocatively. Dressed, the I'm way you're dressed. Oh. Um, is this what rape is about? The way you're dressed? It has nothing to do with the way you're dressed. But then the next one you've given, as an example, is of the father who's abusing his child. Again, is that child dressing provocatively around her own family? Maybe she did the wrong thing in having a shower and putting a towel on and getting out and going into her bedroom or even be washed by her ch by her father as a child. As children do when you've got parents have a bubble bath and they squirt bubble bath all over you and have fun as a family should. What are you doing by putting these two examples and then talking straight about, about being dressed provocatively and things like that? That's got nothing to do with those two it's, examples that you've given a... at the outset. That really annoyed me first yeah. off to give that example anyway to give those that 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 advice and then talking about boundaries if you're dating discuss with the other person what conduct is and not and is not appropriate once you have set boundaries do not put yourself in pro compromising situations in which you could be uh, abused. abused again putting it as if it's you're going to be your fault that you get yeah. abused so if you do put yourself in a compromised position and someone rapes you you are culpable that's what we're reading from that once again the definition of rape is very different from what this book is actually trying to portray and and it's now leading on to something else there's a big word that they like to use in this book and we're going to talk about that which is guilt what this this now this really 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 got to me when i read this entire chapter the only emotion that you talk about when someone is abused is guilt guilt, guilt. and how these people felt guilty yeah. i i I'll, I'll i'll go on to where it says um okay. here we are right if your feelings are similar to those of annette or natalie um how can you cope with guilt Okay, do you want to know what Annette's situation was? Because we haven't read about Annette. She's mentioned at the very, very beginning, in bold letters, he grabbed me, threw me down before I knew what was happening. I tried everything I could do to fight him off. I pulled out a can of pepper spray, but he knocked it away. I tried to scream, but only air escaped my lungs. I pushed, kicked, punched and scratched. And that's when I felt a knife pierce my skin. I went completely limp. Guilt? Guilt? That's the only emotion. Guilt. I, really? Is that all you're coming up with? I am absolutely gobsmacked. And this is the depth of the advice that you're giving within this book. Um, and, and Natalie was the 10 year old. Yeah. And it, the other thing that really got to me, on page 232, at the top it says, Natalie also struggles with the guilt. Now bearing in mind this was the 10 year old, I shouldn't have been so trusting, she says. My parents had a rule that my sister and I had to stay together when, I, when we played outside. But I didn't listen. So I feel I gave my neighbour the opportunity to hurt me. What happened affected my family and I feel responsible for causing them so much pain. I struggle with that the most. Right, can I re-quote that, that one sentence there? So I feel I gave my neighbour the opportunity to hurt me. Really? This is fascinating. This is a victim at the yeah. age of 10. Right. Who is yeah. playing outside and now feels guilty because she's not followed her parents' advice. Pardon? What? There's a lot and more to... And it's her fault? 
and this is this is what we want to come on to about comparisons this this book does not give the right and correct advice it uh, completely omits most of the uh, normal advice that would be given to people that are in this position by professionals people by professionals. Who are trained trained not just I've, I've, I'm a plumber and now I've become an elder or I'm a window cleaner which is most of the cases and I'm now an elder in a congregation I'm now qualified because I've got that title to counsel everyone on every subject yeah. that ever comes up because I've got my secret handbook called the elders shock of the uh, shepherd the flock book I'm now equipped and absolutely qualified to counsel everybody on every situation what you don't say in this book is you talk mm. about different situations of people being in a, a position of abuse, and being abused. You don't ever mention that it could be an elder. So you talk about this child who, who was playing outside with her sister and unfortunately she didn't keep with her sister. She went off and played maybe on her own, which gave this man who had decided to pick her out as a victim the opportunity to take advantage of that fact. What about the brothers and sisters, the, the mums and dads in the organisation that that willingly tell their children play outside when you're together because strangers who aren't Jehovah's Witnesses are absolutely going to take advantage of every situation. What about the witnesses that take advantage of the situation that you put your children in on a daily basis? For example, going on the ministry alone with a brother or being in the car with a group of people, you go off in the territory, you're alone with that person. Now, th this isn't just speculation, this is, this fact. is fact. We know because there are so many court cases that have already been through now over the last two or three years, there are more pending and there are lots more, believe me, Watchtower Bible and Track Society, where people are now starting to come out and, and talk about and expose those that profess to be Christian in these kingdom halls and the amount of molestation and rape that is taking place within the within kingdom halls. Within the organisation itself. It's not mentioned no, in this book. You, you, you don't even make reference to the fact that it could be an elder or it could be a brother or a sister that's done the abuse or it could be a pedophile, a pe a pe a pedophile that's, that's moved congregation and suddenly is now in a position of authority like a minister or servant yeah. or even an elder. You don't mention any of that. What about the sisters? There's sisters that are capable of abuse as well. Yeah. You don't mention anything at all in this book that it could be a fellow Jehovah's Witness. So we, ha we do have, and this is one part, we're going to bring out some comparisons on some proper advice in a minute. We're going to put the link onto the bottom of the video as well so you can go there if you are a victim of rape or molestation or you know of someone that is and you need specific advice, proper advice, this is by no means exhaustive, but it's one link. There are many more out there. Um, when you go to things like this child safeguarding policy of, of the Watchtower, um, there, there is nothing in there that will actually protect the children correctly and with the right advice. Mm -hmm. And with this letter, uh, many of us have it now. It's out on the internet, October the 1st, 2012. And now this, this gives specific instructions to, to the elders on how they should uh, conduct themselves within the rules and procedures set down by the governing body on those accusations of rape and molestation. Now on uh, paragraph 11 it talks there very clearly about Deuteronomy chapter 19 verse 15 where unless there are two witnesses this is going nowhere. That they are advised to make sure that this uh, is actually kept under wraps and that it goes absolute, it's managed downwards, not upwards. There is no advice in here about actually taking this to the police or, or the authorities or in any way helping the individual through counselling, therapy and professional advisors. Nothing. Abs this is all about protecting the organisation. So on this particular part of the video, I just want to make it very clear to all of those individuals that know of someone that has been in this position or has or is going through this position and we've talked to some of these regardless people recently of age. regardless of age regardless of how long ago it was seek professional help yeah. you will not find it within the watchtower organization no. it's not there no. and if you do try to share it with people in the organization you might find that you end up on a very rocky road and it ends up nowhere and could end up with you being finding yourself even outside, which is a good thing as far as we're concerned. Seek the professional help, counselling, therapy, and if you can, go to the police. 
Can I? And that's what I other point we wanted to bring out. This this book, this particular chapter, when it's talking about this type of abuse, mentions not once about going to authorities, and it mentions not once no. about going to a doctor. Oh, apologies. Yes, you do, don't you, about a doctor? But guess what it's for? On the footnote at the very, very end of the chapter, on page on page three two three four yeah. ab above the box that's a question thing says sometimes victims of abuse are subject to severe depression. In such a case, it might be wise to consult a physician. In some cases, okay, just for depression. Okay, what about all the actual physical harm that you might have endured during the rape or the abuse? Or the mental, I mean, the mental scarring that could be, that is unbelievable. Why isn't it talking about that? It says here, tell your story, okay? On page 232, the Bible tells us that the height of his personal tr turmoil, the righteous man Job said, I will give vent to my concern about myself. I will speak in the bitterness of my soul. What's that got to do with abuse? Anyway, you will, be ben you will benefit from doing the same. Talking to a trusted confidant about what has happened can in, can in time help you to come to terms with the rape and gain relief from your distressing emotions. In fact, if you are a Christian, it is important that you speak to a congregation elder about what has happened. Mm. The comforting words of a loving shepherd can assure you that a victim of rape, you have not been defiled by someone else's sin. That's what Annette found. As she says, I talked to a close friend and she urged me to speak to with a couple of congregation elders or Christian elders in my congregation, sorry. I'm glad I did. They sat me down on several occasions and told me exactly what I needed to hear. That what happened was not my fault. None of it was my fault. Do you remember what Annette went through? That's right. She was stabbed. She was ki she kicked, punched and scratched this person and then a knife pierced my skin Just and stabbed. I went completely limp and yet she sat down with a couple of Christian elders and she's feeling fault. exactly and she's hearing exactly what she wants to hear you've not said at all in there about you must go and seek medical help you must go and help and, and see if this person can be convicted in, so that this person can stop going and committing this, this crime again yeah. Okay, you mustn't force somebody to go to the police, but at the same time, you've made no suggestion that that's even a, even a, a not a, even a possibility. A possibility. No, not even a remote An possibility. There's no option there. No. This article is very very good. I just want to go on to um, one of the first pieces of advice it talks about. Um, it, the bit that we got off the internet, not the the young people asked, but this is this particular article is from people experienced within this situation of rape and abuse mm. and what they would happen and what, what action should be put in place as a result. First of all, seek medical attention. Number one. Even if you do not want to take the assault to the police, you must be seen by a doctor to re receive care for any injuries and to be tested and to receive treatment for any sexually transmitted diseases. Doesn't even mention that Where's in your that article. in the book? Where is that in the book? Yeah. Even if you have the intense desire to shower, before showering, before showering, go to your, see a doctor because he or she can collect evidence to try and convict your rapist. Even if you don't want to press charges right away, you may change your mind later. Chances are your rapist has or will attack someone else. Yeah. This evidence could be the difference between a conviction and another rape on another person. Where's that in the book? It talks about keeping your clothes you were wearing. Don't wash them. Take them, put them in a sealed envelope or a sealed bag. Give them to the police. Now, this is the bit that I really wanted to express emotionally, okay? This book talks about guilt. Guilt. What other emotions come with that? You've touched on depression in a footnote. But it says, remind yourself that every person responds differently to a rape or a sexual assault and that all feelings ranging from depression, humiliation, fear, confusion, anger, numbness, guilt to shame. Guilt comes very, very far down that list. Yes, there's it is one of, of them. It is one, one of them, them. But there's a lot of other emotions yeah. going on there. And it says all of these feelings, all of these feelings, however unpleasant, are normal. Normal. When you've been through something like this, those are the emotions you're But the only feel one you're mentioning is, is guilt. guilt. Interesting. Very interesting. 
And this is all a way of managing down and managing the situation to keep it in-house and private. Yeah. You don't want it being exposed to the governing body, do you? That's if it's why. an in-house if it's an in-house rape or assault, yeah. you certainly don't want them going to yeah. this. And that's why you tell them to go to elders. And that's why we have the proof of this mm. in these secret letters that now everybody can start reading. Carry on then. The other thing it talks about, um it, it says about how it shatters your your uh, a sense of trust and and how, how you can how you can Look at look at the situation you've been through. Replay it over and over in your mind, and this can haunt you for years. Mm. The reason that is is because if you don't get the right medical help for for helping you to realization, I mean, it says here about um, yes, talk to somebody you trust, but don't be afraid to find local help, a counsellor who specialises specialises in rape or or the sexual assault, not just your elder who's just who's got a book. That can give you generalization on how to help somebody yeah. on different cases everybody's different as it says at the outset everybody will have different emotions at different times and handle it and get over it or, or, or get through those emotions a lot quicker than others some people it will they will never get through their emotions and be able to work through them and that's the thing they need professional help and there are there are different categories of special counseling and therapy out there depending on the circumstances that the victim has been through see for instance if it's an elderly lady of in her 80s who might have been attacked she might need special specialty help in that particular field because of her age and maturity whereas there might be a completely different set of examinations and therapy and counseling for a young baby they're all very different but they're all specialized they're all professional they know what they're doing they know how to handle this stuff this book doesn't mention any of those things right. and the elders certainly have no idea about what they're getting involved with yeah. when somebody comes to them with this particular type of issue yeah Exactly, and the other thing, um, th this article um, on the internet about uh, proper advice for people who've been raped and, and abused, it says things that um, not to say to someone who's been raped, okay? Were you drunk? What were you wearing? Oh, hang on, let's go back to your book, shall we? Because yeah. what did you say there? Things to being, it says, um, all right, d d avoid flirting or dressing provocatively. Okay. Yeah. The real advice says... What were you wearing? Don't, don't, don't comment. Don't say don't that. mention things like Men that. Men can be raped. Men can't be raped. It's your fault. Why aren't you getting over this faster? You're wallowing. That wasn't rape. Were you leading him or her on? Wait, you've mentioned Hang that. On. You've mentioned that yeah, as well. Yeah, that's in the book. Mentioning how um, you could be seen as... as um, let you put in your boundaries there. Because, it, you know, you don't you don't want to look like you are actually in the position where you'll be quite up for physical attention. This this advice works contrary to, to the what, professional exactly. advice. Exactly. You are you are not got a clue what the hell do you think you're playing at. You haven't got a clue what you're talking about, governing body. You need to wake up and realise that you are not the people who can counsel people and give the right advice to you, especially to youths. This is aimed at youths. This is aimed at young people. What are you doing? You need to wake up and realise you are you are so dangerous with the yeah. advice you're giving. And and I go back to the fact that it you say nothing at all about if it's a possibility about it being somebody in the organisation. Yeah. And what yeah. if it was? What counsel would those elders give those people? Well, we know exactly. Would you what ask they, first of all? Was yeah. there two people there? Did yeah. they witness it? We As know we've already mentioned, we mentioned it. They they will immediately come out with the scriptures of Deuteronomy nineteen fifteen, and if there is only one witness, this goes nowhere. So, for those that are a victim of this within the organisation, we ask you that to seek advice from lots of us out here about where to go next. You can go to aawa.co. Uh, there's a support team there. You can speak to many of us out here on YouTube. And more importantly, we're not the professionals, but we can direct you to people that are and can give you the counselling, that can give you the professional therapy that you may need because you're not going to get it from a group of men. Mm. You really aren't. No. Do you know what their last paragraph says? I don't think I've read that yet, have I, about the last paragraph? No. The last paragraph in the whole chapter about this. I'm going to read it to you because this is their this is their little bit of gem of advice at the end. You too can find that there is a time to heal. Rely on supportive friends who are like the elders described as being similar to a hiding place from the wind and a place of concealment from the rainstorm. 
take care of yourself physically and emotionally take care of yourself not get help get other people to help you do that mm. get needed rest and most of all rely on god to of all to for comfort jehovah who will soon bring about a new world in which evildoers themselves will be cut off but those hoping in jehovah are the ones that possess the earth oh dear oh dear you're you're basically telling them that this it's the system's fault and that basically um you've got to they've got to take care of themselves and rely on jehovah which is yeah. oh. do you know um if uh, for those that have been on a first aid course uh, and many of us have in the past the, one of the first things that you're taught on first aid is that um, a little bit of knowledge is extremely dangerous and it's better not to get involved at all if you don't know what you're doing it's better to leave it to those that are trained that understand the process that they're about to get involved with with helping somebody else especially when it comes to first aid and this my goodness, is all about first aid. Mm. Physical first aid, emotional first aid, yeah. spiritual first aid as well, comes in a bit later, we, but there's a lot of work. Prayer, absolutely. Yeah. But that isn't going to physically help you in the sense of getting that initial help straight away for yeah. your physical ailments and the things that have happened to you on the physical sense with, with any, any anything you've suffered with the result to this attack. Yeah. But governing body, how dare you? You need to wake up and stop trying to be counsellors in areas you are not qualified. We're not qualified. No. But we, know, we certainly wouldn't give out advice like you have. No, and we know where you're expert. You're expert at concealing things and protecting the organisation and not the poor sheep that you're supposed to be truly shepherding. To those that are in these positions where you're feeling vulnerable, and that you are seeking help. You're not alone. You're not alone. Please start reaching out. There are a lot of us out there that can redirect you to get the professional help that you need. No Even if where it's you just are. a listening ear for you. Yes. But we certainly won't try and counsel you because yeah. at the end of the day, we 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 just we're all the same. We're humans. We're fall we're infallible. Uh, inf we're fallible. So we're not yeah. infallible. Uh, but governing body, you are fallible beyond you've left everybody extremely care. vulnerable with this we wanted to share this with everybody out there because it, it, it's too dangerous and uh, we've noticed it we thank you the the brother that uh, brought it to our attention on this particular page and uh, we hope that somebody somewhere out there that if, if this is useful for one person out there then it was worth doing yeah it really was and and we just hope and pray to those that are involved with this sort of stuff that find themselves in this position that they get the proper help that they need yeah thank you very much for listening say goodbye for now and um we'll see you soon see you soon bye Good for bless. now take care